Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Okay, this is going to be my last video for the day. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to read something to you, uh, something I've been really thinking about. And um, I, for years, since I started this whole thing, which started when I, believe it or not, when I was seven years old, the Lord spoke to me and told me I would not marry. Okay. When I was 12, 13 years old, that age, uh, the Lord came to me, uh, kissed me, and I received a thorn of suffering in my heart. Little did I know I was to become a prophet, that this was all about Bible prophecy. I had no idea. I just wanted to walk with Jesus. That's all I wanted. That was my heart's desire, was to be able to walk with Jesus in the high place. I had no idea the Lord was leading me into this area of Bible prophecy, into the book of Revelation, into um, um, being a prophet. Nobody wants to be a prophet because prophets' lives are not fun and they're not easy. My life was not easy. I had moments of wonderfulness, but they were moments. Most of the time, I was either in depression or fighting and struggling against Satan on some level, um, fighting against my own um, attitudes you know, uh, insecurities, fears, all kinds of things that I had to overcome and, and deal with on a daily basis. Uh, but I didn't realize at the time that the Lord was making me a prophet. Okay? Um, when everybody else was saying, you know, oh, doomsday, doomsday, we're all doomed, <laughs> I was saying, the devil can't overcome the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against God's church. Um, there's no way <laughs> that, but and, and this is what I was saying. This is this has been my message, a message of encouragement to the bride, to the church, that we are overcomers. We will overcome Satan. Uh, Satan wants us to believe that he's overcoming us, but it's just not going to happen. Can't happen. Won't happen. But it, along the whole way I've been going, I've been crying out to the Lord steadily. Lord, how long? Lord, how long? Lord, how long? Lord, how long do I have to do this? How long am I going to be in suffering? How long do I have to travail? How long do I have to to go through this mental, emotional, spiritual um, pressure constantly in my life? How long will how long will before I am set free from the things that I have to suffer from? Not understanding why I was suffering the things I was. I didn't understand it. Now, all along, the Lord has been giving me a message, and I didn't quite catch on. I didn't catch on, because who would? Um, it's only in the last few years that I actually realized that the Lord was preparing me for this time, preparing me for this time to be on YouTube, for this ministry, this short six, seven-year ministry that I've been on here. He's been preparing me for this ministry. And during that time, I was doing something and doing things that were showing me, God was answering me through some things that had happened. Um, for instance, I just want to bring up some things that I had shown you before, but I'm going to show you again just a couple of my embroideries. For instance, this is one of the verse, I Lord got me into cross stitches. I started to cross stitch in my early 20s, so I've been cross, -stitch, I cross stitched for over 20 years, okay? Um, some of the cross stitches were quite simple, but a lot of them were quite complicated. And this particular one was one of my very first complicated uh, cross stitches. I've showed it to you before. I'm going to show it to you again. This was one of my very first cross stitches. A woman in a very elaborate dress, very Victorian. A woman holding a baby. And this was one of the very last cross stitches I ever did. The one of the very last, because my hands got too too arthritic to, to hold a needle any longer. And so I stopped cross stitching in my uh, early 40s. Okay, 40, 43, 44, I stopped cross stitching altogether because I just couldn't hold it. Plus my eyes were bothering me too much. So this was the, the last, the last cross stitches I ever did. A woman wearing, she's wearing a very elaborate, multicolored dress. She's holding a baby. She's got wings now. And she's got a crown of 12 stars around her head. 
12 stars around her head and she's holding a baby. She's wearing a multicolored dress. Crown is 12 stars. <clears throat> Some of you have seen these little figurines, but I'm just going to show you one. Before I started YouTube, a couple of years before I started YouTube, I went into a, a local store, a local drugstore, and I was very attracted to these little figurines. And for some strange reason, there were 12 of them, but for some reason, I only ended up with seven. And I won't go through a whole detail of that, but again, you see this woman. This is the Church of Philadelphia, and she's holding a baby, with a baby with a heart. She represents the Church of Philadelphia. These little sort of figurines, I found out later after I had them on my bureau for three or four years, and all of a sudden the Lord told me to go look closer at these little figurines, and lo and behold, they matched the seven churches of Asia in the Book of Revelation. I thought, at the time, I was quite shocked because I didn't buy them, purchase them for that reason. I purchased them because I liked them. I actually would have gone back and got some more, except they had run out and they were the only seven that were left. So I ended up with seven of these figurines, and lo and behold, they matched the seven churches of Asia. Asia, again, a prophetic thing seems a coincidence, but it really wasn't. It was an it was God leading me through the Holy Spirit to prove to for my edification, for my um, uh, realization that I God was using me and directing my steps so that He was confirming to me things in my life. And over and over again through my YouTube channel. I would say something and not know why I said it or believe something or say it, something would happen in my life. And I would say, think it was a coincidence and lo and behold, it wasn't. It wasn't a coincidence, especially when you start looking at all the things that happened afterwards. I would do a video and I think, and then a week, two weeks, a month later, it would be confirmed. Some way, somehow, it would be confirmed. Over and over and over and over and over again. One of the things I said that wasn't popular at the time when I said it was that the Church of Philadelphia overcomes the synagogue of Satan. It's in the book of Revelation. The Church of Philadelphia, who is the Bride of Christ, overcomes, defeats the synagogue of Satan. And now look what's happening, people. We can see it in real time. We're seeing it happen. The Church of Philadelphia is defeating the synagogue of Satan. It's happening. A few years ago, when I said this, nobody believed it. Nobody thought it could happen. I didn't know how it could happen, but I said it and I believed it. The Lord was using me through my faith to make things happen. And look what's happened in the last few months alone, the last few weeks. Every week, something major happens. Syn the synagogue of Satan keeps going down and down and down and down because Jesus Christ is going to make his enemies his footstool. He's going to be stomping on the head of every last one of those demons and powers and principalities that have opposed him. And he's using his church to bring them down. Okay. <clears throat> Why am I bringing this up? <laughs> because I was thinking about this. Right now we have this amazing sign that everyone's talking about. Is it just a coincidence? This amazing sign that's coming up in Jul on September 23rd, 2017? I don't think so. I believe it's a very, 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 very significant sign. What it means exactly, I'm not quite sure. We can always suppose something big is happening. We can date set, and maybe we should. Maybe we should be date setting on this one because it is such an incredible sign that it's only happened, I, I don't know whether it's happened before at the birth of Christ or it never ha has happened before. But this incredible sign of September 23rd, 2017, that it will never happen again. Never happen again. The stars are in the sky. The sun, moon, and stars are in the sky for signs and seasons. We knew that, know this for a fact. Use our scriptures. We know they're there for signs and seasons. In the book of Genesis, Practically the first verses in the Bible talk about the stars in the sky, the sun, moon, and stars put, in, put there by God for signs and seasons. Now, why did I show you those two, two figurines, those two, um, the figurine and the, and, the, and the pictures? Quite simple. I was praying for years and years, how long, Lord? Hold on. I'll have to call you back. Sorry about that. I've been praying for years and years and years about how long, how long, Lord, do I have to suffer with what I've been suffering with since I was 12, 13 years old when I received that thorn in my heart, 
which is by the way, by the way, biblical. Well, God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble and to make him the man of God that and the prophet that he was the and the and the and the evangelist that Paul was going to be, and the writer of the epistles for the Gentiles. He gave him a thorn in the flesh. Mary was also going to be pierced in the heart. She was prophesied when at the birth of Christ that she would be pierced in the heart. I willingly took that thorn, that same thorn, in my heart. Not knowing why I was doing it at the age of 12, 13 years old. I didn't know why I was doing it. But I did it out of faith. And the Lord has used me since. Getting back to what I was saying. Signs and seasons. God puts them in the sky for signs and seasons. Shall we read Revelation 12? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon uh, and, the, and the moon at her, under her feet, and in her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with a child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, a, behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. For he must reign till he hath put all his enemies... Oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, started reading on wrong verse. Uh, ten and ten, um, seven crowns upon his head. Oh, I have to, I'm going to have to do something real quick here. Let's go that, just do that again. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on, upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried in travail and birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to, to devour her child as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had the place prepared of God, that they, sh they should feed her there a thousand two hundred two hundred three score days. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, the Church of Philadelphia. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that be that dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And now I want to go to Oh, I lost the place. I lost my place. Hold on just a moment, just to give me give me a second to get there. First Thessalonians five one. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Not upon us, upon them. Who? The enemies of God. The enemies of God. Peace, they say, they are the ones who are saying, Peace and safety. And when they say, they, our enemies say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. As, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, ye brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overcome you as a thief. You are children of the light, and of the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, or do as others, but let us watch and be sober, sober for they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are the day, be sober, put on the breastplate of faith, and love, and the helmet of salvation, uh, and, and for helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that 
Whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Therefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you also do. What am I trying to say? I've been asking the Lord through all this that I have gone through over and over again. How long, Lord? How long? When will this end? When will I come to my peace? When will I be at peace from this this what's the word I'm looking for this burden that you've put upon me all these years I've been suffering with this burden in my heart burden in my spirit burden how long must I suffer for this and did I little did I know that the Lord had been giving me the answer all these years all these years, Lord has been giving me this answer. My first embroidery, my last embroidery, September 23rd. Whatever happens, it could very well be, um, because I can't date set, because I don't know for sure. But I think we are looking at the rapture of the church. I think we're looking at the rapture of the church. If not the rapture of the church, the reversal of the abortion laws, Roe v. Ro Ro versus Wade, Roe v. Wade, I think at least that, at least, the bride is coming into maturity, and I've said this before, the bride has to come into maturity. She's been immature since the birth of the church in, on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came in to clean her up, to get her straight, to make her a fully mature woman for her, her, for, for her son, Jerusalem's son, which is Jesus Christ. Galatians 4.25, the mother of us all is Jerusalem. She is the Holy Spirit. That's why we're called New Jerusalem. Because the Holy Spirit is coming into us to make us a presentable bride for the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. We are the daughters of Jerusalem. And the daughters of Jerusalem have to come to full maturity in order to be a fruitful bride. The woman... September 23rd is a woman who is fully sexually mature. She's giving birth to a baby. She's in heaven. Satan's after her. But she's a mature woman who overcomes Satan, who has got the moon under her feet and she's clothed with the sun. She's got a crown of 12 stars. Remember when my picture fell off the wall? Jumped off the wall? Broke the pieces all over the ground? You remember that? That was a sign. That just happened a few, few weeks ago. That was a sign. Breaking the glass ceiling. The bride is coming into maturity. The bride is coming into full government. We had to learn how to defeat Satan. On this level, how in the world are we going to defeat Satan on the spiritual level? If on if we have, I mean, if in the physical level, if we haven't defeated him on the spiritual level, that has to come first. And the Lord was showing me that the church, the bride of Christ, has learned to defeat Satan, to expose and shake the powers of, the, of, of Satan's kingdom and bring them down so that we can rule and reign with Christ. An immature bride is not what he's looking for. He's looking for a queen who's going to sit beside him and rule with him and be able to discern right and wrong, which is why my apple was destroyed. The seeds of Satan have been destroyed in the church and been removed from the bride. She is ready to be redeemed. She's ready to be fruitful for the Lord. She's ready. And I believe that a physical sign of this happening, if it's not the rapture of the church, it will be the reversal of the abortion laws that have come upon our lands and just to destroy us. The Lord gave us the ability to be fruitful we need to be able to come back against Satan and say, no, this is wrong, this is evil, it's murder, it's got to stop. It's destroying the family, it's destroying babies, it's destroying lives, it's destroying people, it's destroying the women who are involved, it's destroying the men who are involved. It's got to stop. 
So if it's not the rapture of the church, which somehow I have a feeling it probably could very well be. <laughs> it could probably very well be the rapture of the church. But at the least it could be, which would be very, very, very big itself as well, is the reversal of the abortion laws that have come into place because the Roe Ro versus Wade. Just saying, there's no coincidences in my life. Very, 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 very few coincidences in my life that I have been able to say, oh, that was just a coincidence. Most of the time, it's a sign. All these years, I've been praying, how long? We've been supposed to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Guess what? Not just Jerusalem, the peace, the peace of Jerusalem is the Holy Spirit coming to rest in peace and saying, okay, I've done, I've done it. My, the bride is clean. The bride, the bride is ready. That's the peace of Jerusalem. And the peace of the new Jerusalem is to say, yeah, I'm a mature woman. I can now rule and reign with Christ. That's the peace of the new Jerusalem. That's the peace she's coming to. When she is strong and she's firm and she's an overcomer and she's put Satan under her feet. Just like Christ did. Christ is preparing his bride for this time. We're that close. I had a dream the other day and I, I didn't overcome in that dream. There was something I was fighting and I, so I'm thinking the Lord's probably take me back to it until I actually overcome it. There was something else. I don't remember exactly what the dream was, but I was being pursued in this dream as well by something. And I, so I haven't yet overcome everything, but there's, there's quite a few things that I've overcome. And spiritually, I'm just amazed at the Lord. I'm just amazed at the Lord. Uh, oh, in the, I think part of the dream was I was in this a house or a building and I was trying to escape from something I was trying to get out of this building and believe it or not Alex Jones was in this dream and I was going getting ready to go down this long hallway because I was trying to get out of this building I was trying to go down this uh, there was a long dark hallway and I was thinking that was the way to go and actually Alex Jones stopped me in this dream he opened the door to an exit and he was saying pointing me going like this come 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 this way this is the way you need to go and as so I I followed him actually I went the way he told me to go and he grabbed me by the shoulders I was as I was walking out he was behind me he grabbed me by the shoulders and I in his dream I I could I was the most weirdest thing I I tangibly felt Alex Jones love for I felt like he this love was emanating from him I can't explain it, it was the most amazing thing I just felt like he was he was pulsating love for me, not in a sexual way, but in this real spiritual love was just emanating from him. I couldn't believe it. His attitudes towards the church have changed a lot over the last few years. I have to tell you a lot over the last few years. I'm really impressed with him. I have to tell you, I'm really, really impressed with how Alex Jones has really matured in the last few years. In particular, in the last couple of years, he's really matured. But I just felt this love emanating from him in this dream very strange anyway he actually directed me out of this building that's when the, the dream ended but I'm just trying to say to you something big's getting really big September 23rd is something September 23rd 2017 is something something is gonna happen and the Lord has been showing me all these years from the time I started my embroidery <laughs> When I was in my early 20s to the time I finished my embroidery, he's been showing me. I've been asking the question, not knowing he was answering the questions, but he was spiritually directing me, which had me constant. Well, these are not the only two, two embroideries I've done of women with holding babies. I've done several. Not knowing why I was constantly being directed to do it. I just felt compelled. And I, I loved it. I just... I, but not really, I wasn't putting together these, these embroideries with Revelation 12, 1 Thessalonians. I wasn't putting it together with, you know, the, the Church of Philadelphia. I wasn't putting it together with the Rapture. I wasn't putting it together with any of these things. I was just doing it out of love, thinkingly. It was just a coincidence. But now looking back, I can see the Lord was giving me a sign. All these years, he was answering me, only I didn't understand it. Sometimes it's like that, people. Sometimes it's like we we are asking over and over again for something and the Lord keeps answering us but because we don't recognize it 
we don't realize the Lord has already answered. So we keep asking over and over again, which is what my case is which what I was what I was doing. I was asking how long, how long, how long till I'm at peace. See, when he put that thorn in my heart, it took away my peace. And I had to fight for my peace on every level. And every time I overcome something else and I overcome another thing and overcome another thing, my peace level keeps going up and up and up. Because he's casting out fear. God wants us to have a spirit of peace. He wants us to be in peace and safety. He wants us to have hearts that are, are, are perfect in love. Because perfect love casts out fear. This is where he's taken us. And believe me, September 23, 2017 is something. It's something. Isn't that amazing? As a woman in travail, that day will not come upon us. It'll come upon them like a woman in travail. Was that thrown in there for just no reason? Or was it just a coincidence? Just a coincidence. 